the human body is a fragile thing. Something as minuscule as a virus like the one I'm infected with can rob you of your voice, your strength, and in some cases your life. I tire of these human weaknesses. All of them. I want to shrug off not just infections, but bullets. I want to be invincible. Unfortunately, that's just something in comic books and movies. Or is it? Human beings have always looked for ways to protect themselves. Thousands of years ago, this took the form of strapping animal hides over their shoulders or around their torsos. Ancient Romans and medieval Europeans fastened metal to themselves. Once guns came along, most hard body armors became impractical. You had to bury yourself under so much metal you could hardly move. And taking it all off to go to the bathroom was a nightmare. Despite this, hard body armor was still used. In the 1870s, Ned Kelly, the Australian outlaw, famously created suits of steel for him and his gang when they had their final showdown with the police. It didn't cover their legs, so the police just shot them there, but they still looked badass. And hard body armor consisting of ceramic or metal plates is still available to military and law enforcement personnel for extreme situations, but for day-to-day -day use, it's just too cumbersome. Because of the shortcomings of hard body armor, soldiers and scientists began to search for alternatives. In the 18th century, soldiers found that layers of cotton could protect them against simple firearms. In the 1950s, during the Korean War, U.S. soldiers were equipped with armor made out of nylon, fiberglass, and heat-treated aluminum. In the 1960s, Stephanie Kuala created the lightweight synthetic fiber known as Kevlar. Kevlar is five times stronger than steel and is what most bulletproof vests are made of today. But the bulletproof vests of tomorrow will most likely be made of liquid armor. Scientists are currently developing two forms of liquid armor. The first involves saturating Kevlar in a sheer thickening fluid. A sheer thickening fluid behaves like fluid until it's agitated say by a bullet. Then within a few milliseconds, it hardens and behaves like a solid. The second form of liquid armor involves reinforcing Kevlar with magneto-rheological fluid. MR fluid is made up of oils and iron particles and hardens not in response to mechanical stress like shear thickening fluid, but to a magnetic field. So when a current is run through the MR fluid, the iron particles in it line up, dramatically increasing the thickness of the fluid. Four layers of Kevlar treated with these liquids are as bullet resistant as 14 normal layers of Kevlar. These are all examples of wearable body armor, but none of these change my anatomy. What if I'm not looking for something to put over my skin? What if I want my skin to be the body armor? It turns out that a Dutch artist named Jalila Saidi was wondering the same thing. She set out to reinforce human skin with spider silk, which when woven together is 10 times stronger than steel. Her goal was to create bulletproof skin. Together with Utah State University, she successfully combined the two. The end product wasn't bulletproof, being only able to stop bullets fired at half speed, but it was significantly stronger than normal human skin. The most important aspect of this project is that it proved that a foreign biological material could be integrated into human skin. If spider silk could be combined with human skin, what other materials could we fuse into our flesh? Last year, scientists succeeded in doing something they've been struggling with for over 25 years. They created the first man-made interweaving molecule. It's called the Star of David catenane. It's called that because the shape of the molecule resembles the Star of David. Interweaving molecules like this one are what make up a virus's shell. It's a molecular chain mail that's lightweight and incredibly tough. Scientists believe that if we could assemble millions of these interlocking man-made molecules together, we'd be looking at the strongest, most lightweight form of armor the world has ever seen. So viruses, these infective agents, which so often hurt us, might end up showing us how to obtain the ultimate form of protection. And if such a substance could be incorporated into human flesh, like Jalila Saidi's spider silk, well then, I would be invincible. Soon I Will Be Invincible happens to be the audible book that I'm recommending this month. If you ever wanted to get inside the mind of a supervillain, and really, who doesn't? This is the book for you. 
Audible is the sponsor of this episode, and it's sponsorships like this that allow me to continue this series. So if you like science friction and want to lend some support, go to audible.com slash rusty and download any of the thousands of books they have on offer. Whether you're into science fiction, science fact, horror, or historical, they've got it. They even let you trade in a book if you start listening to it and decide you're not into it. And if this is your first time going to audible.com slash rusty, your book is free. Thanks for watching. Subscribe for more episodes, check out some of the previous ones, and be sure to let me know what superpower you want.